Well, I'm sure that by now you're all aware of the fact that there was a very, very important Democratic Party primary taking place in the 11th Congressional District of Ohio between Nina Turner and Chantel Brown. And if you haven't heard the results, just um, click out of this video and remain in ignorant bliss because this is going to ruin your day if you were hoping that we'd have one of the most important fighters elected to Congress because Nina Turner lost. Now, it is the case that not all of the votes have been counted at the time that I record this video, but with more than 75% of precincts reporting, it is the case that Chantel Brown has defeated Nina Turner 49.8% to 44.7%. So to kind of put things into perspective for you, Chantel Brown, someone with little to no name recognition, made up a 35-point deficit and ended up pretty handily defeating someone who's a political behemoth like Nina Turner with national name recognition. Ask yourself, how on earth did this happen? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. Money. And that might be a little bit of an oversimplification, but just look at how much money was spent against Nina Turner here and see how much money Nina Turner spent, and I think that you'll get a pretty clear picture as to to why this race turned out the way it did. So as HuffPost's Daniel Morans explains, when it comes to pro-Turner or anti-Brown spending, there was just over $900,000 spent. However, when it comes to pro-Brown or anti-Turner spending, $2.7 million. So Nina Turner here was the underdog. Nina Turner was heavily disadvantaged. And when you look at this chart provided to us by Kirk Botto on Twitter, you can see that just one super PAC basically made the entire difference here. It is the Democratic majority for Israel PAC who Chantel Brown petitioned to get in the race for her. So they spent almost $2 million on behalf of Chantel Brown to oppose Turner and support Brown. And all of these other smaller groups, such as MoveOn.org, National Nurses United, Ohio Women Rising, I mean, they spent on behalf of Nina Turner but I mean, it pales in comparison here. And the only one that came close to any of the anti-Turner PACs, Third Way, was the Democratic Action PAC. But still, they were outspent by Third Way, who spent lots of money, almost $500,000 to oppose Nina Turner. So when you look at those charts, it's really easy to see why Nina Turner lost here. How Chantel Brown was able to do what was seemingly impossible. Money. And this is why I am very clear about the need to decommodify elections and get money out of politics, because it shouldn't be the case that money dictates who wins and loses elections. But unfortunately, that is the reality of the system that we live in. And that's really unfortunate. And I just want to say you're you're watching this video, you're reading the news, and I know what you're feeling, because guess what? I feel it, too. I feel gutted. I feel demoralized. I feel depressed even, genuinely depressed. And we needed this victory. We needed this victory after the loss, after the, the sting of 2020, after we all still feel that we needed this victory. Because Nina Turner is the real deal. Nina Turner wouldn't just be a plus one vote to all of the progressive priorities in Congress. She wouldn't just be a plus one to the squad in Congress. Nina Turner is a leader. Nina Turner would be a fighter, vociferously so, for Medicare for All, for the Green New Deal, for student debt cancellation. And who knows what Nina Turner could have accomplished. Today alone, we learned how important electing progressives to Congress is. Because Cori Bush single-handedly got the Biden administration to extend the moratorium on evictions. How? By simply sl sleeping on the steps of the Capitol for five days, being relentless. So imagine if Cori Bush never defeated Lacey Clay in 2020. It might still be the case that we are facing a national eviction crisis, even to a worse extent than we are now. Cori Bush did that. So imagine what Nina Turner could have accomplished had she been elected. And even though you're feeling depressed and nothing I say is going to convince you or make you feel inspired, one you know silver lining is that Nina Turner is a fighter and she's not going to go away. Like This isn't the last of Nina Turner, obviously, and I do believe that her political career 
is going to flourish. I do believe she will one day be successful, whether it's in Congress or as a governor. I don't know. Nina Turner is an icon. She is a leader. And leaders don't just go away with one election loss. Bernie Sanders, you know, he wasn't immediately electorally successful. It, it takes time. Losses are inevitable. They're baked into the into the process. But that doesn't make us feel any better. Being reminded of the fact that, yeah, you know, losses are inevitable. That doesn't make us feel any better because the situation is rapidly deteriorating in the United States and around the globe. And we just need one more voice to to, like, move us a little bit closer in the right direction. And it's not like Nina Turner was the panacea. It's not like Nina Turner alone could solve all of the country and the world's problems, but just having her there as a fighter would have made a measurable difference. And now it's over. And to make matters worse, if you click on the trending tab on Twitter and you click on Nina Turner's name, you see corporate Democrats celebrating individuals like Yvette Nicole Brown. Loving every moment of this, celebrating you see corporate Democrats um, like Tom Watson. You see uh, Bush-era Republicans turned anti-Trump Republicans who are uh, saying, hey, Chantel Brown won. Now it's time to uh, celebrate. I don't know if it was Bill Crystal, but I mean, you know, the, the general people, the blue check mark, um, you know, Democratic Party, loyalist liberals on Twitter who um, were terrible during the 2020 Democratic Party primaries, like they all reared their ugly heads again. But another component to Nina Turner's loss here is that the left just, the left wasn't all on board here. And that's something that absolutely has to be discussed because yes, it was the case that big money probably was, was the defining characteristic of this race. There are other things that we have to explore. And I want the left to use this defeat to do some serious soul searching about what we're going to do as a movement collectively. And there's no leadership here, right? We are a decentralized movement. We're a bunch of misfits and edgelords online. So it's not like we're going to form some sort of a think tank tank and emerge with a consensus but we have to do some soul searching folks just as individuals be a little bit introspective about what went wrong and i'm just gonna i'm gonna be frank there's a lot of leftists who didn't just not participate in this election to help nina turner but actively tried to sabotage nina turner and it happened from the beginning. Like when I did my interview with Nina Turner to promote her campaign, I saw portions of it clipped out online where people on the left supposedly were trying to disparage Nina Turner. That's incredibly harmful. I saw some podcasts who purport to be on the left quite literally discourage their viewers from donating to Nina Turner, knowing the damage that that could cause. Because Nina Turner was going to be outspent. And at that point, we knew that these super PACs were bankrolling Nina Turner's opponent. So I saw a lot of leftists all basically discounting Nina Turner, brushing her aside as if this victory was um, unimportant. Well, now you're going to see the difference. Now you get to see a corporate Democrat like Chantel Brown, who's not going to listen to you at all, who's going to ignore you, who's not going to support Medicare for all, who doesn't support student debt cancellation, who doesn't support housing as a human right. Now you get to see the difference between Nina Turner and Chantel Brown and the individuals who either didn't support Nina Turner actively and sound the alarm, make some noise for Nina Turner, or actively discourage people from donating to Nina Turner's campaign, you get to own this. You get to own this. You know who you are. You get to own this defeat because you align with the corporate Democrats. Wittingly or unwittingly, you have been a useful idiot for the DNC, so congratulations. Anyone who is pretending as if Nina Turner would be a useless addition to Congress, you get to own this. You know who you are. Anyone who claimed that Nina Turner would be as ineffectual as other members of the squad, you get to own this. You get to see firsthand the difference between another corporate Democrat and Nina Turner. And this is why I was very adamant about the fact that we don't use phrases like fraud squad, right? I didn't want to do that because you implicitly suggest that members of the squad are so ineffectual that electing more progressives to Congress basically is a meaningless endeavor. There's no point to it. But in actuality, it is really important. As much as I have my criticisms of the squad, the fraud squad narrative 
which also ended up harming individuals like Nina Turner because she was associated with the squad and they campaigned for her. That was bad because when you say fraud squad, you suggest that there's no value to having members of the squad in Congress when Cori Bush today demonstrated her value. When AOC this week is playing hardball when it comes to infrastructure, threatening to torpedo the entire infrastructure bill because the reconciliation package is being watered down by corporate Democrats. And yes, that's not to say that constructive criticism is uh, never allowed. Of course it's allowed, but you have to draw a line between criticism that's constructive and criticism that's destructive. And what I saw through a large portion, if not the majority of Nina Turner's race, was discourse that was incredibly destructive. And people who go out of their way to demonize members of the squad, not constructively, but destructively for views and clicks, Nina Turner is automatically viewed as uh, implicitly culpable there. All of AOC and um, Ayanna Presley and uh, Cori Bush's perceived failures are also failures that are uh, applied to Nina Turner as well, unfortunately, because, you know, she was basically running as an addition to the squad. She was running as an extension of Bernie Sanders' movement. And if you claim that Bernie Sanders is a failure altogether and he's useless in the squad, they're failures altogether and they're fraud squads, then this is what happens. You cultivate widespread pessimism and people choose to check out. So people choose to not donate to Nina Turner. People who otherwise would have supported Nina Turner, gone to Ohio and campaigned for Nina Turner, choose to not do that because they've been uh, they've been told that you know it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if Nina Turner is in Congress or not. And in the short term, sure that might be the case that Nina Turner alone isn't going to change everything. But what I've seen from the left is just so so destructive and i don't even know how to characterize it i don't even know what to say people were calling nina turner a sellout before she even had the chance to be elected so anyone who participated in, in that discourse any podcast who promoted this idea that nina turner was bad or useless and wouldn't be an adequate fighter sufficiently for the progressive left you get to own this loss congratulations you are a useful idiot for the democratic party establishment you are a tool for nancy pelosi chuck schumer and joe biden they're very thankful that you you know um fostered this narrative that nina turner isn't worth fighting for and again i don't want to make it seem as if this is the reason why nina turner lost right because ultimately even if the entirety of the left was united um i i think that basically when money gets involved it's really difficult to kind of change that momentum in the opposite direction but would the additional support from leftists online for nina turner have helped unquestionably if nina turner didn't have to respond to and address criticisms from leftists who are already preemptively disappointed in her before she's already elected would that if she didn't have to waste her time responding to that would that have helped absolutely so anyone who pushed this bullshit you own this fucking mess right here you own this you know who i'm talking to we're gonna be upset we're gonna be angry we're gonna be depressed and if you need to take time to check out of electoral politics for a little bit and stop consuming political news i think that that's healthy i think that that's understandable uh, understand that this is a, what you're feeling right now, the depression, the disillusionment, this is a very human response. And it's why, folks, I was very adamant that we take this race seriously. Why the minute we started to see poll numbers shift, I was trying to do everything in my power to convince leftists that we have to take this seriously. Like, I know that you get this impression that everything was copacetic and it was trending towards nina turner being victorious because hey look how exciting everything is we have cornell west and bernie sanders and aoc canvassing for nina turner i promise you though that to me was not a sign of a looming victory that was a sign to freak the fuck out because i'm sure that her internal polling showed that she was at risk of losing and then she contacted bernie sanders and aoc and told them we're at risk of losing the seat here. You've got to help me. So people probably expected Nina Turner to win this because hell, it's Nina Turner, right? But again, this is why I say you can't take any seat for granted. 
Now, I don't know if maybe the result would have been different had Nina Turner run in 2022 when the DMFI can't, you know, focus all of their resources on one particular race. I'm not sure. But what you need to do is not let this moment lead to you being disempowered and checking out because that's exactly what the Democratic Party establishment wants. They want you to be disillusioned with the process. They want you to check out of electoral politics. I feel that instinct as well, but I fight it. And do you want to know why I fight it? Because even if every single candidate that I support and endorse going forward loses their election, I still take satisfaction knowing that I am a pain in the ass of these corporate Democrats who desperately want us to check out. I want them to know that regardless of how many times we're kicked in the teeth, and punched in the gut, I'm going to get back up again, and I'm going to force them to spend all this money on these races to defeat us, because I'm never fucking stopping. I'm going to be a pain in their ass forever, for as long as I possibly can, because I'm not going to grant them the satisfaction knowing that I'm going to check out. In fact, I'm going to be that much louder about the progressives that I support in the next election cycle. So understand, folks, the feelings that you're feeling are natural, and they're valid, and quite frankly, they're warranted. I feel very, very defeated right now. And there's nothing that I can say to make you feel inspired because look, the system itself is absolutely ruthless. And there's going to be other candidates in the future who most of which we support, they're going to they're gonna be defeated by big money like this. But each election cycle, so long as we get another AOC, so long as we get one more Cory Bush and Jamal Bowman, so long as we keep inching closer towards victory, even if it's not at the speed that we need, to stop us from going off this cliff, we're still making progress. The fact that they view us as the threat to where they felt it was necessary to spend $2 million, that shows that we do have them afraid. And there's going to be a lot more losses down the pipeline. We're going to lose a lot of elections. In 2022, we're going to feel the same feeling that we're feeling now. But guess what? Maybe there's going to be another primary victory. Maybe Amy Valella wins her race. We don't know. But I know that all of our victories are not going to come to us if we check out. So take time that you need to recover mentally. Take time to collect your thoughts. And I want the left to be introspective going forward. I want the left to really get serious, for lack of a better word. And I want us to understand who the enemy is click on the nina turner name on twitter look at that uh click on the latest post and you're gonna see who the fuck the enemy is it's not other leftists it's not members of the squad you'll see who the enemies are okay so i mean i'm just rambling at this point i don't know what else is left to say this was a victory that we desperately needed but um unfortunately we lost thanks to big money